So we'll finish with this, uh, the terms. Now let's go to the definition. And the definition is the application of, our, of how we understand the comprehension of term. Because we've said that there are two, uh, there are two logical properties of the term. You have comprehension and extension. And the comprehension of the term is actually the definition of the term. And in the extension is the application of the term. So uh, let's let me just go to the topic. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the definition is a statement which explains what a thing is. So it's a statement that answers the question: What is this thing? What is this object? What is this? And the definition, of course, is based on the comprehension of the term. So the comprehension is the ex is the definition or the connotation of the term. Okay. Now, the term definition, the very term definition, came from the Latin term definire. Definire, which means to lay down or to put down. To put down markers to lay down certain markers okay so that's how uh, that's where the term definition came from laying down or putting down certain markers if you want to define your property for example you have to put a marker okay you have to put the marker to say that this is mine so uh you for example if you want to uh know or you want to tell people that my property is up to this point and up to this point, then you have to put a marker there. You can put a, uh, you can plant a tree, for example, or you can put a uh, uh, a concrete slab to mark that that is your property. Okay, so when we define a term, that's exactly what we do. We put down certain markers or limits. Okay, so. What are these markers? These are the conceptual thoughts. Okay, so for example, what is a triangle? When you say a triangle is a polygon, polygon is a kind of marker. It's a conceptual marker. Okay, or if we say what is a bank? A bank is an institution. Institution becomes a logical marker or a mental marker, a conceptual marker. So, there are, there are two general types of definition, the nominal and the real. So, nominal from the term, nominal meaning just the word, just the name. You know? So, we are simply defining the word, okay, the word, not necessarily what the word really is. So, it's a simple uh, meaning of the term of the word. So you may provide the origin, the root word, or an equivalent word, like in, like in the case of a synonym. So what is happy? Happy, happy is uh, happy is joy. What is a father? A father say papa. So it's just an equivalent word. So you are just defining the word, not really explaining what the word really is. So it could be an equivalent term, a synonym, joy, happiness, president, chief, okay, the head, leader, etc. Or the etymology, the origin of the word, like when you say biology, coming from bio, meaning life, and logos, meaning study. So you are just defining the term biology, not biology as a subject or as a course or a part of science. So that's the type of nominal definition. Now, the real definition is a definition that really explains what a thing or subject or object is. So we are not defining the term, but the object or the thing itself. So it explains the nature of the object or the thing by giving its properties or you enumerate the characteristics or the qualities or the features, etc. Okay. 
So, it could be a complete explanation, meaning a complete definition of the thing, or just a simple description of the object because it's difficult to always to be able to define everything completely okay? or to have uh, an adequate, sufficient definition. Okay? So, for example here, UST. UST means University of Santo Tomas. That is a nominal definition. Okay, because you are just based on the actual name, right? This one, friend. Friend is a body or a pal. It's a nominal definition. Father, male parent or a man with a child. And we are no longer uh, defining the term, the word father, but the father, the object, the, the person itself. So you say male parent or a man with a child. So it becomes a real definition. Logic, the science of correct thinking. So we are defining the force or the subject itself. Dog is canine. It's not a real definition because it's just an equivalent word. So it's a nominal definition. Father, daddy, papa, nominal definition. What about this? UST, the Royal and Pontifical and Catholic University of the Philippines. It is a real definition because we are not defining the term UST, but the institution itself. Friend, a trusted person. So that is a real definition. Logic, logic -ke. So it's a, it's a root word of the term logic. So it's a nominal definition. Dog, a four-legged barking animal. That is a real definition. Okay? Any question? Any questions so far? Is that clear? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, again, uh, at, you have to give me some feedback, no? Okay, if you don't understand the the topic. Now let's move on. The real definition, as we've said, defines the object itself. And when we give a real definition, we give the or enumerate the properties, the characteristics, the traits, the features, the qualities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Properties or characteristics can either be essential or non-essential. Essential or non-essential. So what do you mean by essential? Of course, but, but when you say essential, it means necessary or unchangeable. It is uh, an integral part of the object. So that if we remove the essential properties, then the object will no longer be the same object. Okay. Now, when we say non-essential, the property is contingent or changeable, meaning we can still change these properties and the object will not change. Okay. It will be the same object, the same essence of the nature of the object. So, for example, UST. UST is a university, university along Hispania. Is this an essential or non-essential definition? University along Hispania. The question here is, if UST moves out of Hispania, will it still be UST? What do you think? Yes. It will still be UST, right? In fact, uh, the original location of UST is not Hispania. Oh, so a bit of history. The original location of UST is inside the Intramuros. Oh, inside the Intramuros. But uh, the Dominicans uh, decided to construct a kind of an extension of the university in, Span in Intramuros 
in the 1920s, and that building that they constructed is actually the main building. That's the first building they constructed in the new campus. And then, of course, during the war, during the World War, Second World War, the uh, the buildings of UST in Intramuros by destroyed by the bombardment of the Japanese, and therefore UST had to transfer from the Intramuros to the San Paulo campus. So, uh, and then of course the facade of the main building in Tramuros, they transferred the remnant of the facade, reconstructed that facade of the main building in Tramuros that actually became the arc of the centuries that we, you know, at, were facing Hispania. So the arc of the century is a reconstruction of the original arc, which is actually the facade of the main building of UST in Hispania. They have to reconstruct. So if you, well, uh, you cannot visit UST today, but if if you have the chance to visit UST, maybe next year, you will see that the original facade is the one facing the inside of the campus. The one facing España is a is a replica. Okay, so they joined the 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 the, uh, the remnants. The original, uh, the original is the the one facing the main building. And the replica, the reconstruction, is the one facing the the okay. España, no España. So, going back to this example, this is not an an essential definition because location is not essential to the institution. Next, the university founded by the Dominicans in 1611 under the patronage of Saint Thomas Aquinas is that an essential? Definition. What do you think? Yes. Anyone? Essential? essential. This is essential, essential, sir. Yes, that's essential because one, it was the Dominicans no, who established UST, and the reason why it's called UST because it is named after Saint Thomas Aquinas. So, you remove any of these, then it will not be a will will not be UST. Okay. Triangle, polygon with three sides and three angles. Essential, non-essential. Essential. Yes, that's essential because uh, it will not be a triangle if it does not have three sides and three angles. All right. Now. So how do we give an essential definition? An essential definition explains the very nature of the object by giving its proximate genus and specific difference. These proximate genus and specific difference are two types of essential qualities. So let, let's define what we mean by genus and specific difference. The proximate genus, or sometimes we call that the genera, no? genus or genera consists of the essential elements which make the object or the individual or the subject or anything that you are defining similar to others so the genera is the the overarching quality okay and the specific difference is that distinctive element which makes the uh, object different from others from other objects that belong to the same genus or genera. Okay. So, for example, when you define a father, you will say he is a parent. Or you can say father is a male. Okay? Or a parent. So, father is the term that you define, and the genus, the genera, is parent because that is the bigger, oh, that's the bigger. Uh, category building structure so that's the genera television appliance okay or you say uh, a bank institution triangle uh, say polygon or 
figure. Okay, so those are the example those are examples of genera. Now, a specific difference would be the quality that will differentiate the object that we are defining from other objects that may fall under the same genus. So example, you say a father is a male parent. So parent is the genus. Male is the specific difference. Building. A work or residential structure. The structure would be the genus. Work or residential is the specific difference. Okay, because there are many structures. And building is differentiated from the other structures by it being a work or residential structure. Television. An audiovisual appliance. Okay? So that's the meaning of specific difference and genus. Now, of course, some definitions may be longer than this because you try to explain the specific difference. Okay? So that's how to give an essential definition. Now, that's a very that's a very difficult thing to do because it means to be able to give a complete real definition, you really understand the meaning, the nature, the essence of what a thing is. Okay? And we cannot always give essential definition. That is why, instead of giving essential definition, we can give a descriptive definition, which, by which we define a thing or object by giving the positive but maybe non-essential features of the object. But still, it could still be, we can still give the essential, but basically what we give are the non-essential features of the object. Okay? So here, there are several types of distinct descriptive definition. One is distinctive definition. Here, we try to explain the object by giving a set of characteristics, distinctive, unique characteristics, okay, of an object. Okay, so these features may be distinct. No, it may distinguish the object from other objects. And normally, this is how we uh, define certain objects. For example, we say, what is water? A colorless, tasteless, and odorless substance. What is the genus there in that definition of water? Anyone? What is the genus in that definition? Substance. substance. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Substance. Substance is the genus because it makes uh, that's the that's the general category where water is subsumed, right? But how do you differentiate water from other substances? Well, we enumerate the unique or distinctive characteristics of water. Colorless, tasteless, and odorless. Now, these characteristics or features of water being colorless, tasteless, and odorless may not be essential to water, okay? Because there are some waters that are definitely not colorless or not odorless, or not tasteless, okay? So, another example. Dog, a barking animal. So, what is the genus in this definition of a dog? Animal. animal. It's, it's animal, all right. But how do you distinguish a dog from other animals? Well, that a dog barks. So, barking is a distinctive characteristic of a dog. Now, barking may not be essential. Well, of course, generally, we we consider barking to be essential to a dog, but there is a dog that does not bark. I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, dog that, that does not bark. Instead of barking, it wails. It's actually very, uh, it's actually used for hunting for hunting. So this dog is called the Basenji dog. You can Google that. Basenji dog. Because it's a dog that does not bark. It's, it wails. 
Sa Tagalog, umuungol. Hindi siya kumakahol, umuungol. That's why it's used for hunting. Okay, anyway, that's, these are just side, side comments. Now, let's go to the next type, the genetic. So, when you give a genetic definition, still, you provide a genus because that's the most common, that's the standard part of the definition, give a genus. And then, you add the origin or process of production or how this object comes about. So, genetic, the origin or the process or where it was, how it was produced. Right? Okay? Uh, so, example, when you say water, okay, so of course you say water, it's a substance. Resulting in the combination of two atoms of hydrogen and an atom of oxygen. Now, this is a genetic definition. Of course, you can say, well, that's also a scientific definition because now you are putting in there some uh, scientific concepts. But it is a genetic definition because it tries to explain the uh, origin of water. Or can you, you can say, tsunami is a series of water waves. So actually, series of water waves would be the genus caused by so when you say cost by, that means you are trying to explain how this uh, series of water waves originate. Okay, the displacement of large volume of body of water. Or we say cardiac arrest is the abrupt cessation of normal circulation of the blood. And there are so many things involved now there, no? Due to failure of the heart to contract effectively during system. So, the, again, this is a medical definition, but it is a definition based on the genetic type of definition. Now, again, that definition of cardiac arrest may be an essential definition. As I've said, could either be essential, could either be non-essential. But the thing is, it is based on how particular object originated or how it came or how it was produced. Okay? So keep those examples in mind. Now, let's go to the causal definition. Again, you give the genus, but you add to the genus uh, the efficient cause. By efficient cause, we mean that which produces a thing. So the creator, the producer, or the manufacturer. Okay? So you can define... For example, a painting is a piece or work of art of a painter or artist. Okay? Or you can say, Nolimitangere is the first of two novels by Rizal. Actually, there are so many things involved in this definition. What would be the genus there? What is the genus in this definition? Hello? Still there? Novels. Novels. Okay. Novels. I don't know if some of you are answering in the chat box, but I cannot I cannot read because I'm okay. I'm looking at the my PowerPoint. So the genus is novel. And how do you distinguish the novels? You can actually add there two first of two novels. So it's actually a, you can say it's also a distinctive definition, but, but the focus here is who wrote the novel? Rizal. Okay. So Rizal is the author of the novel. So you can, you can define something by giving its author. Of course, by citing its author, it becomes an essential definition because, of course, Nolumit Angere is a work of Rizal. Now, you can also give a causal definition by giving the final cause, meaning the end or purpose, okay, of the object. Okay, so end or purpose or use of the object. So example, what is an instrument used to measure time? So measuring time is the purpose of the watch. Thermometer is an instrument designed to determine temperature. The design to determine temperature is the cause of the, the final cause of the watch. So when we give a definition, take note that we need not be confined to one particular type because 
the objective is to define it properly. So we can combine the different, you know, different characteristics, the different types of definition in order to give a clear definition. Now, another type of definition would be the popular definition. The reason why it's called popular is because it is based on our common knowledge or a common idea of people about a particular thing or object. Some definitions may be too technical, may be too scientific, but later they become popular because they become common. Okay? They become a common definition. Uh, what are some examples of popular definition? If you define a place, for example, uh, about, uh, define it as to how it is commonly known. So you say Manila is the capital city of the Philippines. So it's a popular definition. It is also a distinctive definition because it is unique to Manila to be the capital. There are no other capital city of the Philippines except Manila. Although we cannot say that it is a essential definition because Manila will still be Manila even if it is not the capital of the Philippines. So these are some common forms of definition. Scientific definition, usually we use technical or scientific terms, of the definition. Uh, medical terms, we, uh, medical definition, we use medical terms. Uh, we cite medical procedures, okay, using medical terms. Okay, so again, whether it's scientific or medical, it can be categorized under the main categories of definition. Legal definition, a definition that we of legal concepts using legal terms. So the definition will always depend on the context or on the discipline, okay? The discipline where the term uh, is used, okay? So there could be a scientific definition, a philosophical definition. There would be what? Uh, uh, like this, a legal definition, etc., etc. Now, when the definition becomes part of the dictionary, it is entered into the dictionary, then it becomes a lexical definition. Okay, so a lexical definition is a standard definition now. And of course, legal, medical, scientific can be in the lexical, be part of the lexicon, because we have legal dictionaries, medical dictionaries, and so on and so forth. So these are there is a there's no very clear distinction to all these definitions because they tend to overlap uh, one another. Okay. Now, let's go to the rules on definition. So, what are the rules? If you're going to define the first current, the current rule is that your definition must be clear. Okay, must be clear must be clear because that's the very purpose of the definition. You're trying to explain what the object is. Okay, so if you give a definition that simply confuses people, then you defeat the purpose of the definition because it's meant to explain or to clarify. So like for example, say, democracy is a condition where people believe that other people are as good as they are. Oh. That is not a good definition because, well, what do you mean by people being good as they are? Okay, so that is a bad definition. Next, definition must not contain the term being defined. So, you, otherwise, your definition becomes redundant. So, yeah, it's the, 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 the challenge is to use a different term. Use a different term. You cannot say a driver is a person who drives, or you can say a policeman is a is an officer who does police works. Uh, a teacher is a person who teaches. Uh, that's that's not a good definition. You have to uh, use a different term. Okay, but sometimes. That is exactly what you find in a dictionary. For example, uh, how would a dictionary define confession? 
dictionary may probably define confession as the act of confessing. It's a clear violation of the rule, right? But the dictionary is exempted from this rule because in the dictionary, you find the def definitions of the words, or a particular word, including its root word. So before it will define confession, it will define first the root word or the verb to confess. So to confess could be defined as the act of revealing or telling your sins to a priest or telling your secrets or the act of admitting to something. So in those definitions, the term confess is not found. Okay? So it's a good definition. They are good definitions. But the next term in the dictionary would be confessor. Confessor. And what is a confessor? Confessor is not the person who confess. The confessor, the confessor is the person to whom you confess your sin. Okay? So, and then the next term would be, so confess, could be confessor or the word confession. Now, the, the dictionary will no longer repeat the definition given before. It will just say the act of confessing, having defined confess previously. Okay? So that's why the dictionary is... Uh, exempted from this rule because it defines the other uh, uh, forms of the words. Okay. Now, next rule. Definition must be convertible with the term being defined. This is to ensure that the definition is accurate and equal in extension with the term so that the definition is not too wide or not too narrow. So, for example, you say, a dog is a four-legged animal. Can you say a four-legged animal is a dog? Obviously not. Because a four-legged animal is greater in extension. It is broad. It's broader than a dog. Okay? So, it cannot be a good definition. Okay? Now, suppose I say... A dog is a hairy, barking, four-legged animal. A hairy, barking, four-legged animal is a dog. That's too narrow because there are dogs that are not too hairy. Okay? So, a Labrador, for example, is not very hairy as compared to a Jiu Jitsu, for example. See? So, the definition is rather narrow. But if you say, uh, let's use, have another example. Let's say uh, uh, a mother is a woman with a child. A woman with a child is a mother. Then the definition is okay. It's convertible, meaning it have, the definition has the same extension as the term it is defined. And then lastly, the definition must not be negative, but positive whenever possible. Because you're trying to explain what the object is, not what the object is not. Okay? So, for example, we say democracy is the opposite of communism. That may be right, but that's not a good definition. Okay? Or you say life is not death. Okay? Or you say, peace is the absence of war. A mother is a parent who is not a father. Oh. A professional is a person who is not an amateur. Those are bad definitions. Okay? But if the term is negative, then you have to define it negatively also. For example, Say, um, war is the absence of peace. That's a, that's a good definition. 
War is the absence of peace. But you can say peace is the absence of war. That may be right, but that is not a good definition. Okay? So you can say uh, darkness is the absence of light. That's correct, because darkness is something negative, so you define it negatively. But you're going to say light is the absence of darkness. Mm. No, you cannot do that. Okay? So, any any question before we continue? Let's see. You may have some questions. Any questions? Hello? Still there? Yung iba parang nakatulog na. Okay. Questions? No questions, sir. Okay, good. Okay, okay. So, we continue. Okay, so let's continue here. Okay, now, you will have to answer. Okay? This is just uh, a simple exercise. Just tell me if this is a good definition. Okay? Basketball is a game played with a round leather-covered ball by two teams on a rectangular court. Good definition or bad definition? Is that a good or bad definition? Good definition, po. Good definition. Uh huh. The chat. Okay. Good definition. Bad definition. What do you think? Do you think? Good definition, po. Okay. What about the others? Meron bang magsasa? Anyone who would say that is not a good definition? Good definition. <laughs> good definition. Okay, two, two, two. Anyone who would say it's a bad definition? We are now exercising our critical thinking here. No? Critical thinking. This is now critical thinking in, in action. Applying the rules of definition. Anyone who would say that's not a good definition? I will call some people. Mm -hmm. uh, Cheryl? Cheryl? Good or bad okay. definition? Good definition. Good definition sir. Okay, Roland, James, good or bad? Good or bad? Sir, for me, this is good definition. Good definition. Okay, Madge, 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 are you, are you with us? Madge Smith. See, no, you Madge Smith. Wala siya. She's, yes. Much. Good definition. But what? Good definition. Good, good definition. Okay. Sister Luja. Yes, good definition. Good definition. Okay. Julian. Good definition. Good definition. Walang ko kontra. Giancarlo. Giancarlo. Hello, John Carlo. Hi, sir. I think it's a good definition. It's also a good definition for you, okay? Miss Chen? Um, it's also a good definition. Good definition. Elaine? Yeah. Elaine? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, yes. I think it's oh. bad definition. It's bad definition, okay? So, it's a common track, no? Earl! Sir, uh, sir, actually, 
vai deixar um puto, vai deixar um puta essa parte é FN shot, sir. Essa é sir. Ou pula o basketball lá só e dele na defesa. Oh, okay. So it's a so it's a bad definition for you. Yes, sir. Okay. Ali? It's a good definition. Paul. It's a good definition. Okay. And the verdict is, it's act. Okay. Let me explain. So, can we apply this definition of game played with a round leather covered ball by two teams on rectangular court to other games aside from basketball? Yes, Paul. Yes. 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 Like what? Like what? Volleyball. Like volleyball. Like, like volleyball. Very good. So that means this definition yes. is a wide definition. It's not a good definition because it accepts other terms that it can also define. So it's not an exact definition. Okay? Clear. No, because, yes, because, yes. because a good a good definition must be exact. It must be clear. It must be exact, precise, and positive. Okay. Now let's have another example here. Oh, uh, let's see the, Uh, what? Okay, next. Peace is not only the absence of conflict or war. Obviously, this is good or bad. Good. Yohan? Yohan? Um, good or bad definition? Valid or invalid? Peace is not only the absence of conflict or war. A uh, bad book, yes, Yeah, it's a bad definition. Right. Because it's, an, it's a negative definition. All right. Here, life is a maze in which we'll take the wrong turning before we learn to walk. Good or bad? Valid or invalid? Hmm? Answer, anyone? Is it a valid definition? Can you understand this definition? Life is a maze in which we take the wrong turning before we learn to walk. Hello? That is actually a bad definition because it's not, it's not, like, it's like saying, what is love? Love is a many splendor thing. Okay, that's, that may be correct, but it's not a good definition. No? So we refrain from using idiomatic expressions, right? Or what? Or allegories or metaphors. We avoid that in giving definition. Okay? Okay, uh, I already give this example. Here, a magnet is an instrument used to lift up or pick up objects. Good or bad definition? Is there any other object that can be defined by this definition? An instrument used to lift up or pick up objects yes yes like what forklift forklift yes so this is not a good definition okay yes sir. a class reunion is a time when all classmates unite together again to find out who is falling apart good definition 
bad definition. That bad is a, a bad definition. definition. Yes, bad definition. So now you understand now what is a good, bad. sorry, a good or bad definition. Okay.